Okay, welcome and thank you everybody for joining us for another series of the uh, Jane Irrigation uh, Training Series. Uh, I'm Richard Rastusha, your host and Vice President of Water Management Solutions for Jane Irrigation. And um, today we're gonna be talking about drought and Sigma strategies using a product called Jane Pulse. Now, one of the reasons why I think this is so important and everywhere you go today, uh, looking online at news or your local newspapers or national newspapers and pretty much any, anywhere you go right now, you're reading about the drought and heat in the West and in particular in California. And uh, I think it's great to raise awareness about these things. It's important that we're, lots of people are aware so that we do some things about it. What I wanna see more of is I wanna see more of uh, uh, solutions. And so that's why I'm excited about the uh, Jane Logic uh, Pulse uh, solution for managing water uh, and measuring water, right? We always say you can't manage what you don't measure. And uh, Jane has a great product to help you measure water so that you can manage it more accurately and better. And uh, taking us through the session uh, this afternoon is uh, Jeff Toole. He's uh, the executive vice president of Jane Distribution Holdings. He is the thought leader for Jane Ag Technology Products. He's been on the IA Board of Directors with me. He's got a real passion for technology and, uh, and learning. And that's the thing that I think is so important when we talk about water management and technology is the people that have the real passion for learning, uh, coming up with new ideas, learning other people's new ideas, and are just open to change and possibility are the ones that are gonna make it happen. And I definitely think Jeff Tool is one of those guys. So Jeff, uh, thanks for joining us. And besides being a uh, thought leader in technology for ag, I know you're also a big bass fisherman. And uh, I was just thinking, is this drought and, uh, and heat, is it causing a problem for you and your bass fishing? You know, it's a, it's a great question. I don't know, I just shared my screen. Can you see the, the opening slide here? Yeah, looks great. Great. So. Looks great, but it's not great. So this is this is actually um, Lake Orville, and on the fishing side of things, you know, <clears throat> I I actually it's funny. I have a tournament this this weekend, a big tournament up in the California uh, Delta, and you know this slide really shows <clears throat> a uh, what the lakes look like right now as a result of the drought conditions. So it's very timely. You know, these, these extreme uh, levels put a big strain on the fish and wildlife, as, as well as what we all feel from the irrigation and drinking water uh, supply side. So for me, you know, when you say, uh, talk about fishing selfishly, lower water levels actually tend to bunch the fish up and uh, sometimes makes the fish better. Um, However, I don't really want to talk about the fact that these conditions have cost me a lot of money in, uh, in new, new props and, and skeg repairs. So skeg being the bottom of the, where the prop is on your, uh, on your lower unit. And it's, it's kind of funny and sad at the same time, but the, usually the first thing my wife asks uh, when I call to let her know we're off, off the lake safely is, did I hit anything? So... <laughs> Low water levels aren't always always good. It makes the fishing better, but it doesn't make the boating better for sure. Yeah, so when you see a water level this low, Jeff, can you even launch your boat? You know, most of the lakes, they've got different levels of, of launches. So the launch just gets longer. It's a very long um, graded, you know, launch and it could be, you know, a, several hundred yards long. And in some of the lakes, when they get this low, you might even have to use old dirt ramps um, to get to get into the water. So that's a good question. It uh, it makes everything you know more more challenging for for sure. Yeah. Well, I'd love to talk fishing for the rest yeah. of the show, but I know we got a bunch of people that want to learn yes. about uh, Sigma and drought. And uh, uh, I just want to remind everybody, I do have the uh, Q and A and the chat open, so. If you've got some questions or comments for Jeff, uh, put them in there and uh, I'll ask them uh, when, when appropriate. So, um, so no, all right. I appreciate that, Richard. And I, I definitely could talk fishing all day. Um, but, you know, on the more on the more serious side, you know, today's webinar topic is it's a good one. And, and it's the subject of, of definitely something we feel pretty, pretty passionately uh, about. 
I realize we've talked about Gene Logic Pulse in a few of our recent webinars, but frankly, it, it's such a simple and powerful and cost-effective solution, and, and it should be an integral part of any water management strategy, especially when considering a drought and, and sigma. So, you know, without further ado, this is what we'll be uh, this is what we'll be talking about today. There are a number of relevant uh, items I want to cover. Obviously, we'll talk uh, briefly about the drought, and I'll touch on some interesting sigma points uh, that everyone should be aware of. Next, uh, I'll quickly go through Jane Logic Pulse and talk about how and why it's an important part of uh, any winning, winning strategy during uh, periods of drought and in meeting uh, your GSA sigma requirements. And then I'm really excited to, to introduce the Symmetrics, uh, their new AG90. It's an ultrasonic flow meter, and we'll, we'll talk about how easy it is to install that and to integrate it with the Jane Logic Pulse system. And then uh, lastly, we'll go through our, our special offer, which will make it really easy and more cost effective than ever to, uh, to start monitoring flow and pressures at your, uh, at your pump and filter stations. It's a pretty full agenda, but we'll move through it pretty quick. I think there's some good, good stuff here. Oops. Went one too far. So I'm sure everyone has seen these maps uh, in some form uh, or another. Uh, the map we have on the left is, is the groundwater prioritization map showing the overdrafted water basins as determined uh, by the D DWR as part of uh, the Sigma rollout. Um, needless to say, we're all pretty much located in a high priority water basin and, uh, and you've been, been hearing from your GSAs on the plans being submitted. And in some cases, uh, implementation has, has already begun. Um, I know those plans are still rolling out. There's only been a couple of those that have been fully approved so far. A couple have been sent back, um, you know, with comments from the DWR, you know, where they were deficient. So a lot of that stuff is, is actively in the works right now. The map on the right is the current drought map. That's as of July 22nd was when I pulled, pulled this off. And at that time, 100% of the state is at least considered in moderate drought conditions. That'd be kind of the, uh, the lighter orange um, uh, color. 94.75 is in severe drought and 83.75% is considered to be in extreme drought conditions. Now, if you look back, I look back at the data and, and one year ago, so literally one year ago, July, only 48% of the state was considered in moderate drought with only 21 and a half percent in severe and only 3% in extreme drought. So it's, it's certainly not the worst conditions, you know, we've seen, but, but it's classified right now as the second worst uh, two year period since the 1976, 77 period. Hey, you know, Jeff, I was speaking to a grower earlier this week and we were talking about Sigma. And one of the things he was saying was that Sigma's, he, he was supporting Sigma, but at the same time he was saying that Sigma's not really helping, you know, much this year, right? With the short term picture. And I was just wondering, is this drought causing any uh, acceleration in uh, the Sigma initiatives? That's a good question. And, and Sigma is really geared uh, more towards the long term. Uh, it's really geared to looking at groundwater sustainability over the next 20 to 30 years. Of course, the local GSAs are feeling the pressure of the drought for sure. Um, statistically, we use between 15 to 25 percent of groundwater for irrigation during our, our normal periods. And excuse me, and that number goes up as high as 40 percent during uh, periods of drought. So drought, it, it absolutely puts more pressure on our groundwater. Um, but to specifically answer your question, I'm not really aware of any additional or new actions being taken by the GSAs at this time. I, I believe most are focused really on getting their GSPs or their plans approved and to start uh, implementation. And uh, droughts aren't new as uh, we'll see on our, on our next slide. Yeah. Well, that makes sense, right? Uh, I mean, the Sigma is a long-term solution, not a, uh, mm, we're having a drought this year, hurry up and fix it. Absolutely. 
So just some more interesting uh, information kind of frame things. So the graph on the left from NOAA shows the statewide precipitation from 1990 uh, to the current year. The blue lines are the yearly values. The straight line uh, at roughly, it's, it's about 22 inches, you can see um, going across. That's the long-term mean. And uh, the real point here is, is there's a lot of variability from year to year over the past 120 years. It's, it's, it's all over the place. The graph on the right shows the drought index with the red bars indicating severe drought, orange, the orange bars are moderate, uh, green is the mid-range and blue uh, as, as wet years. And we, we all know there will, there will be dry years and there will be wet years. And, and I found this statement, I love this statement by a UCLA uh, climate science, scientist. It says, one of the long-term solutions is to fight drought with flood. And it just, just caught my attention and I read a little bit, you know, more about this on uh, this this article and you know the fact is we get enough rain over time we just don't capture and store enough of it to allow us to to sustainably ride through the dry periods you know, every one of us is and should be fighting for more water storage capacity it, it's it's really it's the only long-term and sustainable uh, solution and i've got to actually have a slide here that will show a little bit about this so i think you know, atmospheric rivers or AKA Pineapple Express, um, you know, literally make or break the water supply for California as quoted by, you know, Marty Ralph there, the director of the Center for Western Weather. You can see the same variability uh, of our weather and precipitation patterns in this graph. And it, it was astounding to me when I read that many areas in central and Northern California get a large majority of their water over a period of only 40 minutes during these atmospheric river events. Um, these, they're, these are huge 15, 20, 30 minute downpours. And if they don't come or we don't capture the water, we end up in drought. You know, the ground it, it physically cannot soak up these downpours causing a tremendous runoff, some of which, you know, ends up in our existing reservoirs and uh, but as we all know, most of it, which the statistic I read was 80% plus ends up in the ocean. So the solution, it is right in front of us. We just need to have the political will to do something meaningful about it. And I could go on and on, but um, that's probably enough on my political view. So, you know, I'm gonna jump into kind of Sigma and our strategies uh, that we're going to implement today. But I, I do believe we, we have viable solutions in, in front of us that uh, we're all aware of, and we should continue to, uh, to push for that. So looking at, at, at Sigma, I'm going to take just a second um, to read this quote from a recent uh, Stanford publication, you know, on um, on the water and what you see here is, you know, in the absence of disclosure by users, so that's growers, researchers and regulators, that's your Sigma folks, and the DWR have found other ways to estimate how much water is being taken out of the ground. The conventional method is to measure the acreage of different crops and deduce how much water would be needed to grow them. Here's the key, but more recently, scientists from Stanford, the US Geological Survey and NASA have turned to satellite data to measure the rate of groundwater withdrawal. So not big news. I think using satellites and models to track your water consumption, it should be no surprise. You know, we've been talking about it for a couple of years now and it's, and it's already happening in some GSA areas as, as we speak. What I want to call out is that if you're if you are not measuring and tracking your own water use, it will eventually work against you. Um, you know, at the bottom here, we I, I, I clipped two graphs from two different Gene Logic users in the Central Valley. The graphs show the water applied versus the water consumed, um, and that is determined by our satellite-based monitoring with with AgriLogics. So same same strategy as is what the GSAs will use and are using. 
in both of these instances, you can see that the grower's actual irrigation water applied is around five to seven inches less than what the satellite is reporting as the water consumed by the field through transpiration and evaporation, so ETC. And you can see this gap here where you know, the green line is the satellite-based ETC, the blue line is irrigation, same thing, different grower. On this side, you can see the gap. And you know, without any data um, of their own on their actual water applied, these growers would not have a leg to stand on you know, when their GSA showed they used more water than they did. And in this case, you can see if they went solely off the satellite data, it would show that they used five to seven inches more water than, than what they actually applied. This is uh, pretty unsettling, Jeff, right? Nobody likes to be accused of something they didn't do, right? And oftentimes mm -hmm. when that happens, we go to great lengths to show that, uh, you know, what we're doing is right or we're, we're, um, uh, we are doing the right thing. So has this always been this case? And, uh, and how does this affect or impact growers? Right. I, you know, part of me wishes it was always the case, but it is not always the case. So there's there are many grasses as you know it can pour through the the or Jane logic data and there are a lot of graphs that will show the grower was really right on with the water consumed um, in terms of their water applied you know in this case the growers working specifically to replenish and so they're they're putting back or applying the water to match the etc or the water that's being uh, consumed and so there's a lot of graphs that are very close. I would say, you know, most commonly what we see is that there'll be a hair under, you know, there's always a little bit of deficit, you know, irrigation, and that will change at different parts, you know, times of the year. Um, so I think it's, it's really important. Um, it's the impact can really come through penalties or fees for consumption that, that did or didn't actually happen. And it's really, it's really the whole point of why growers should, should monitor and record their own water applied. And this is just, you know, one example of, uh, of what, you know, growers uh, will face um, and, and some are actually facing from a Sigma perspective. Yeah. So we have a question coming in right now, Jeff, and yeah. uh, it just may be uh, the rest of your presentation that answers this, but uh, uh, the, the question is, how easy is it for a grower to measure their water now? So I would love to be able to just, just I'll continue on through the presentation, um, but I'll give you just a simple answer. It's really easy and we're going to we're going to show you exactly how easy here within the next uh, 10 minutes. OK, great. So there's a couple of other slides I wanted to, to share you know, on Sigma. I'm not gonna go through this, this whole statement here. This was a, from another study on uh, groundwater data and it's, it's California missing metrics um, put out by, by uh, Stanford. And you know, really this, this last part here, production metering data also can help in the development and administration of flexible tools that help groundwater users deal with. So this is the things that growers need to think about. Scarcity, water marketing, incentive programs, and to increase water use efficiently, efficiency, sorry. And then finally, uh, in a court context, a record of water usage over time is necessary for groundwater users to prove their legal rights. You know, the point here is that in order to take advantage of potential water you know, marketing and incentive programs that are coming, or, or even here in some cases, growers need to monitor and record their water use over time. You know, the last sentence is really concerning. Right? I mean, in my mind, there's no doubt that there will be uh, lawsuits over the GSA implementations and the models that they're you know, using to estimate grower usage of groundwater. So I can't stress enough that having your own data is going to be critical to establishing your legal rights. And so what I really wanted to show here was just, you know, this is showing up in other areas. And I've got another slide here that's really, um, you know, talking about 
what the experts are saying. And, and I'm not going to go through all these. These are these these quotes came from uh, or quotes I picked up attending various meetings and webinars and what have you um, over the last couple of years, you know, surrounding Sigma and um, some of the water regulations and et cetera. So just some of the key highlights here, you know, not enough data, you know, most data wins, um, you know, absence of information, people assume the worst. We've all, we've all seen that, right? So in the absence of information, that satellite data that I showed you previously, they're going to assume that's correct. And if that's more, if it shows you consuming more than what you actually put out, that's what they're going to assume. Um, track consumption using broad-based, you know, uh, ET from satellites that we know, you know, data is very important to defend yourself uh, on the water you're using. And then, you know, one of the, one of the best pieces of advice I heard was don't sit back and do nothing. Uh, just thinking that your water rights are good. So, so take, take some action. And um, I just wanted, uh, you know, our viewers today to be aware of the things that some of the experts are saying out there uh, so that they can, you know, take this into uh, consideration as they're planning their own, own strategies. Yeah, I love those quotes, Jeff. And I, especially as I think about this, I think, yeah, um, I do have to take some things into my own hands and uh, measuring my water use is going to be important for many reasons. And as you say, it's uh, you're, you're going to show us it's simple to do. And I think it's also pretty um, um, economical, too. So uh, that, that really changes the game for me. Yep. So we've gone through a lot of the hardware side of, of Gene Logic Pulse and a couple of our webinars. You know, I, I didn't include the normal image that we show here, but just to simply refresh everybody, we install a, a C3 telemetry unit um, along with a pressure transducer uh, on the uh, pre and post filter side of, of your piping. Um, and then uh, connect that to an existing flow meter at the pump and filter station. And as you'll learn today, it doesn't always have to be existing. And, you know, Pulse really just monitors and records the flow and pre post uh, filter filter pressure. You know, we can we, we capture the Sigma related flow data that you need. Um, key point here is information is pushed to users pushed meaning it's sent via email. So you don't have any software to log into no passwords to remember super simple, super easy charts and data to understand. It's, it, it is, without a doubt, the, the easiest and most cost effective um, tool that we have. Um, and so uh, it's, I, I think growers, you know, ones that are using this are really enjoying it. This is an actual, you know, I cut and paste this out of, a, of an email. Um, one of the, the daily um, reports here and this, you can see how this is laid out. This was July uh, 22nd, so not too long ago, just last week. It shows you for the day, the pump ran 24 hours. This, this irrigation event actually started at 6.55 a.m. Wednesday on the 21st and ran until 5.55 a.m. on Friday, the 23rd. So, you know, this ran for a day and 23 hours. You know, for a daily report, it ran the whole 24 hours, so that's what you see. And you've got your um, the water applied 90.2 acre inches or seven and a half acre acre feet in that case you've got your pressure differentials here so your pre and post filter with a pressure differential of, of 4.57 uh, you've got your water applied so far this week um it's a little fuzzy i think that's uh 209 or 200 yeah, uh, acre inches and then so far this season um 345 acre feet. So I'm not going to go through all this again. So we've talked about some of that um, before, but you do see your pump runtime, your water applied, your filter health. What I want to do here is spend a little bit more time um, talking about the alerts. You can you can set up alerts on high flow, high pressure, low flow, low pressure. And unlike the daily email reports, uh, the alerts are in real time and, and they can be emailed to you, uh, text, a text to you, a phone call, uh, letting you know essentially immediately when an alert condition is met. So 
you might have a situation where you want to know if a flow exceeds, um, let's just say 200 gallons a minute, you know, you shouldn't be over 200 gallons a minute and you could get that or say you want to know a high, high pressure condition. So if, if the system is running too high, maybe your filter is, uh, is not flushing properly or there's a valve closed that shouldn't be closed and the pressure is exceeding 40 PSI, you can get that alert. Same is true on the low end. So if you get into a, a real low pressure situation, maybe you've got a leak, uh, maybe something's open that it, it shouldn't be open. You can get that text or that phone call or that email um, immediately when that condition is, is met. Jeff, I, I just call this peace of mind, right? I'm, I've got yes. uh, 10,000 other things I'm worried about and keeping an eye on, and I can uh, quickly uh, get an email alert um, and, and see that everything is great. And it just gives me that peace of mind, which I really appreciate. But yeah. hey, I, I don't want to mean to do a gotcha moment here, but I'm looking at this slide and it says this pump uh, runtime four minutes. Who irrigates for four minutes? <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you reminded me of why I picked this, this particular slide. And so I'm glad you saw that. Um, you know, obviously this instance was not an actual irrigation. It was someone filling up their water truck. So it's a unique, you know, instance where, you know, this situation was happening several times a week and, and the grower ended up putting a stop to it. You know, one of his workers uh, was starting a large irrigation pump. I forget what this pump was. It's a couple hundred gallons uh, a minute, maybe more to fill up the water truck because he didn't want to go back, you know, to where he was supposed to actually fill up the water truck. And it actually caused another problem um, because the worker left, he left a valve closed, you know, maybe got in a hurry, maybe knew he wasn't supposed to be doing this. And so when the next irrigation started up, you know, the pump was deadheading and luckily, you know, the, the, the person that was there, um, the irrigator caught it before there was any, any uh, damage. So, you know, in this case, the grower would have never known if he wasn't monitoring this pump and, uh, and the filter station and getting these daily daily reports. That's, that's a great example. You know, I always think about it in terms of, okay, well, I know when the water went on versus when, I, when it should have gone on and when it went right. off. Yep. But uh, yeah, what about these uh, unauthorized uh, water uses that could uh, play havoc with your pump and uh, cause a really expensive repair or issue? Absolutely. Oh, it's great. Great accountability uh, tool. So here's what the weekly uh, report uh, looks like. The, this image on the, the right here uh, shows a recent uh, weekly pulse report. It shows the current week totals along with the prior three weeks. You can see the orange you know, bar versus the, the gray bars as being the prior three weeks. And here you can see the current week was 20% uh, less uh, runtime and 21% less water uh, than, than the prior week. So in this case, the grower uh, was in the, he's in the South Valley, I know the grower, and was starting to pull back on irrigation, uh, getting ready for harvest. So what this tells him, he can see exactly how much the water was reduced that week and, and it verifies um, that what he instructed his irrigators to do was actually done. And, um, you know, Richard, as you, as you pointed out, you know, Pulse is a great accountability tool to verify your irrigators are actually running the hours and the water uh, you're, you're instructing them to. And so, you know, all of this same data as, as the daily report is shown in the weekly, it's just totalized for the week. And you can also um, see where you're at for the season. It's a little it's a little small here, but you can see water applied so far this season, you know, 319.8 acre feet. And as I said, it's just a great accountability to it. A lot of the growers that first started with this, that was one of the biggest things was some of their irrigators when they would ask, you know, hey, did you run 10 hours? And, you know, they had just gotten this email, they would call them up and, oh yeah, yeah, yeah we ran 10 hours. And it's like, here's a report is saying it ran like seven and a half or, you know, eight hours or something like that. And um, it, you know, it's just, it's powerful from that standpoint. And that's what you get when you, you know, when you monitor your, your flows. All right, well, it's time to get to something that I'm very excited about. The whole team 
you know, honestly is excited about this. Um, you know, we've, we've connected to a lot of uh, symmetrics flow meters out there, a lot of uh, AG2000s, a lot of AG3000s, and then even some of the, you know, older style, you know, propeller um, flow meters that are out there where we've got to put a, you know, conversion kit on it to, to be able to get the, the data out of it. And there are just so many great features on this, this new AG90. It's, it's ultrasonic, so it's got good accuracy. Um, it uses a, an insertion probe, you know, with a saddle. Uh, so new installations and retrofits um, on the old propeller type flow meters are really easy. Um, installation only requires a two inch hole in the pipe and they make a cover uh, for retrofits. I'll show you in just a second. So there's really, there's no more um, spool pieces or welding flanges to install a, a flow meter. The, um, if, if that's not the direction you want to go, I think you're going to, you know, you'll still see a lot of the, the normal, um, uh, I would call the enclosed or the spool looks like a spool piece um, built into to new systems that are going in, but from a retrofit standpoint and on uh, irrigation systems where the grower doesn't have a flow meter, uh, this AG90 is, is fantastic. It's battery powered, um, so we don't have to worry about getting power to it. It's a scaled you know, pulse output, so we can uh, directly connect the C3 telemetry unit um, with, without any you know, adapters or conversion kits. Um, I mean, I hate to say it this way, but there's really no excuse for not installing one of these, these flow meters. Yeah, it's... Uh... It really does look amazingly easy, and I like that, right? I like to be smart uh, when it's uh, when it's easy to be smart. Uh, but is this a one size fit all? Uh, this this fits uh, every every size pipe with the saddle. Oh, almost. So <laughs> the 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 part of the probe here is the same for you know all pipe diameters. But the saddle itself, they make different size saddles for different size pipes. So there, we do have different different part numbers, and that that does affect the cost a little bit. So a larger saddle uh, costs a little bit more. Not it's not much, but it, it is a little bit more. But that's a, that's a good question, um, you know, for for sure. And I've actually got I've actually got a picture here, just a a diagram, uh, you know, talking about and showing how easy the, this type of installation um, is. You know, the top image is the retrofit installation and you can see uh, the larger gasket and how the saddle covers the existing uh, larger hole um, that would be left when you, when you take out the propeller uh, style and, um, and you're just replacing that. You've got a gasket that goes around that. You've got a cover plate the saddle's going to bolt onto that, bolt everything down, install the flow meter, and you're you're ready to go, um, without having to you know go out, cut pipe, weld pipe, you know, do any of the other things that you normally would have to do to put a um, to put a flow meter in. The bottom uh, image is super simple. This is just new installation, and you're drilling a little you know two inch two inch hole putting your gasket on, same thing, installing the saddle, you know, over this and then installing that. So, I, I mean, frankly, it just can't, I don't think it can get any easier than this. And uh, so that's that's one of the reasons why we're so so excited about uh, this this new product and how it will marry up with what we're trying to accomplish with our GeneLogic Pulse. Well, that's, that is simple. And like you say, there's no excuse if, if to not to do this, right? A lot of times it used to be the installation was complex or a problem right. or things yeah. could go wrong, but that, man, this is pretty easy. Absolutely. So with that, um, I want to unveil the, the, the big offer. I think, you know, some of this has been sent out uh, a day or so ago, kind of anticipating today's, you know, webinars. We're, we're, we're so excited about this. And we believe so much in, in what we're having to offer here that we're giving a 20% discount on the Pulse System hardware kit. And that includes 20% off the, the Symmetrics uh, AG90. And we're also knocking $100 off the first year subscription, which the normal subscription is $350. Um, but during this, this period um, through August 31st on this special, 
um, we're going to give that first year subscription at 250. So there's a total possible, you know, the, the, the value, the total savings, I should say, is going to vary depending on what size pipe um, that you might be installing this on. But it could be around $1,000. And, and you can see this. I just put in a typical so people have some idea, um, you know, how much are these things. So a typical eight inch package would be um, around $4,800. And that includes all of the Pulse hardware. So in that case, you're getting the C3 telemetry unit. You're getting the uh, pressure transducers, pre and post filter, um, the AG90 itself, all the cabling that's that's necessary there, um, everything that needs uh, we need from a hardware perspective to do the installation. And then the installation cost, you know, it, it's going to run somewhere between, uh, say, 600 dollars to a thousand dollars it really depends on what all's going on um you know at that location and how easily accessible it is you know is it a retrofit is it a new installation um you know is there a long cable runs just there's a number of things that are variable but that gives you a good idea of about uh, what it would cost um, to get this uh system installed yeah, so a couple of keys for me here, Jeff. Uh, this is on an eight inch package. If I'm if six inch pipe, it might be a little less. Yep. Um, depending on the changes, right? I'm gonna have a number and you're still gonna knock 20% off whatever my number is. Right. But I but I could use this for budgeting and know I'm I'm gonna be right in this ballpark. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. and that, that's a great price. And then when I throw the subscription on top of that, I used to always look at this 350 a year and say, Less than a dollar a day, I, two fifty. I, <laughs> right, right. Less than a cup of coffee a day, right? Uh, right. And it's it's uh, it's not uh, often that we you know we offer twenty percent off of a C three you know the telemetry unit because once you put this pulse system in, you're really set for the future. If you want to down the road add a weather station to that, um, let's say you want to you know do some let's do some additional monitoring the field, maybe you want to control the pump there. You want to turn the pump off and on. The C3 is sitting there and without any any additional investment per se, other than, you know, let's say on the pump control side of things, you want to start and stop your pump. You would have to up your your uh, subscription to a full Jane Logic subscription, but then you would actually see this pulse data, not just on your emails, but you would see it in Jane Logic as well. And that's that's some of what we've shown in the past. Um, but you wouldn't have to buy anything else from a hardware perspective. You may have to put a, a, a relay in. Which is something that's that's you know very cheap. Uh, our electrician or your electrician can install that relay that we would then uh, connect uh, the C3 to, and, and we could start you know doing automation on your on your pump. So it really it really sets you up um, for the future as well. So Jeff, this uh, insulation costs approximately. Um, are, are many of the growers going to install it themselves, or are they going to let somebody else do it? I think most let somebody else do it. I mean, you might have, um, you might call, you know, in our area, of course, you know, or, or sister companies with, with Agri Valley and, and IDC, you know, other fantastic um, irrigation dealers that, that we work with, you know, throughout uh, California are, are set up to do this type of installation. And, uh, and we can do the installation ourselves. You can feel free to contact uh, Jane you know, directly and I've got my my information here. Um, if anybody wants to reach out to me or come through the website, we'll make sure that the right person you know gets gets in touch with you and, and answers any questions and um, you know can give you a proposal for this. Yeah, uh, that's awesome, Jeff. So uh, we had another question come in. Um, yeah. I don't quite understand it, but maybe it'll make sense to you. Uh, do you have a bundle pricing for Sigma compliance? Bundle pricing for Sigma compliance. You know, I'd have to think about that. I, I, I don't, without talking to the, the person, you know, asking the question, I, I would love for them to, to contact me and I'd love to discuss what they mean by, you know, Sigma bundle. I believe, you know, what we're offering here, um, at least on the monitoring and recording of your flow that you would need to report from a Sigma standpoint, this would be the bundle. Um, that, that you would need. And, and again, there's there's other things that we can do that I, I'd love to uh, to discuss and be able to answer more thoroughly. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, great. Well, maybe they'll reach out to you. You've got your contact information here and uh, your cell phone. Jeff, you did a great job today. Boy, uh, talk about uh, doing an excellent job at recapping what's happening in California with the water situation. Um, that was awesome. And then uh, uh, presenting, uh, what a great offer from Jane here. 20% uh, off plus $100 less on the subscription um, and uh, e easy to do. Uh, this is kind of a turnkey package that uh, is hard to say no to. So uh, thank you uh, for doing this and, and presenting this for us today. I want to thank everybody who uh, tuned in this afternoon. Uh, we really appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully we're bringing you good information that you can use in your jobs and out in the field. Remember, you can see all our trainings at uh, janesusa.com forward slash trainings. Uh, and then also uh, our podcasts have become very popular lately. So anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google, iHeartRadio Podcasts, we're on there. Uh, I know a lot of guys are driving job to job or around on the job and listening and learning as they go, which is uh, really exciting to me that uh, people are dedicated to improving themselves and improving water conservation. So thank you guys for that. Uh, we're going to be back on Friday afternoon. Uh, Michael Pippen is going to be talking about drip tape and uh, how to figure out exactly which drip tape works best for your crop, uh, as well as flow levels and, uh, and spacing as well. So we'll be covering that on Friday. Again, thanks very much. Uh, appreciate your time, Jeff, and I uh, appreciate thanks, everybody Richard. tuning in. Yep. Thank thanks, you. Richard. Thanks, everybody.